How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and this is the ultimate FPS increase guide for Apex Legends in 2023. In this video we'll be covering all of the settings, optimizations, tips and tricks you need to know to get the best performance possible on your system, whether it be an old dated laptop all the way up to the latest and greatest from desktop hardware and everything in between regardless of how good or bad your system is, this video is going to help you get the best gameplay experience possible, the lowest latency possible and the highest FPS, heavily updated and features a ton of new optimizations, tips and tricks to quickly and easily apply to your game. And if you want to stay up to date with content like this please do consider subscribing to the channel and pressing that bell notification. With all that's and done let's get straight into the video. To kick things off straight away we have this video sponsor which is highly compatible as it will drastically help reduce CPU, network and RAM usage in the background if you're someone that likes to have the browser open whilst playing their games. Opera GX is a performance based highly customizable gaming web browser. Opera GX is packed full of features that gamers would actually be interested in using such as the GX control panel allowing you to limit the amount of resources available to the web browser whether it be CPU, RAM or network usage giving you a tremendous tremendous step up from older browsers which would hog resources especially when playing games causing slowdowns often have tons of tabs open whilst web browsing the hot tabs killer feature can help identify the resource draining tabs close them down to ensure that your browsing experience remains smooth you can utilize the forced dark pages option once this has been turned on any web page you visit after this will be in a forced dark mode state saving your eyes saving your brightness gx also has direct integration with popular apps such as tiktok discord and twitch allowing for inbuilt browser notifications when your favorite streamers go live there has never been an easier time to switch to Opera GX utilizing the quick import tool. Select your previous browser and all of your browsing cookies, history and bookmarks will be instantly ported over and rest assured all Chrome extensions are still 100% compatible with Opera GX. So get started today by downloading Opera GX and checking out the Opera GX mobile app and what you believe to be the most interesting features of Opera GX in that comment section down below. For those of you utilizing Steam to play Apex Legends, find Apex Legends in your library, right click, go down to properties, head over to local files. At the top you'll be able to see the location of where Apex Legends is installed. One optimization I would highly recommend trying out if possible is to move Apex Legends onto your local disk C drive. You may run into less stuttering issues when utilizing a source based game on your local disk C drive. Navigate down to move install folder, then select the drive you want to change it to. If you're happy to do so, go down to the bottom, hit move. That will then take a few moments. We might as well apply our brand new launch options for the game. Right click on Apex once again, navigate to properties, navigate down to the bottom to launch options. If you have any specific launch options that you need specifically for your game, keep hold of them. Otherwise, if you're not entirely sure what launch options to use, remove everything with inside this box that you currently have, take yourself into the description down below where you'll be able to find the launch options to copy and paste. There is an additional launch option to enable DirectX 12 mode, which we'll be covering later on in the video, but for now we can just copy the bulk launch options, head all the way from the right hand side to the left, hit Ctrl and C, or right click and select copy. Go back to the launch options tab, right click, select paste. Once that's completed, Steam and your launch options have both been set up. We're now going to cover some very quick basic Windows optimizations that you should definitely look to see if you still have enabled, even if you've enabled them in the past as Windows updates could have reset them, hitting the Windows button, typing game space mode, selecting game mode settings. Make sure the Windows game mode has been switched to the on position. Navigate to the bottom left once again, this time typing in power space plan, clicking on edit power plan. Head over to the navigation bar at the top, select where it says power options, then go down to show additional plans. For those of you utilizing a desktop PC, I would highly recommend enabling the high performance power plan. For those of you utilizing a gaming laptop, I would highly recommend just leaving the power plan alone as we want to ensure that the thermal limits of the laptop aren't being exceeded or pushed, so balanced will more than likely give you the best results for a laptop. To select the power plan, just navigate down to the bottom, click the small icon next to this. Once it's selected, you're then using the power plan. If you want to jump back with inside of here and go back to your old power plan for any reason, whether you're running into performance issues or you just don't want this anymore, just select your old power plan. Once it's selected, minimize out. Next up, we have a rather advanced optimization, but it's highly recommended for those of you planning on utilizing the DirectX 11 version of the game. Or if you're not entirely sure what I'm talking about, the default version, as it can drastically reduce input latency for the game and make it run in a true full screen exclusive mode. Navigate to the bottom left hand side, type reg edit, then select the registry editor. If you would like to see if your game is not running in true full screen mode, simply boot inside of Apex Legends. Once you're inside of the game, look on your keyboard to see if you have any shortcut keys or hotkeys to change the volume of your PC on your keyboard. If the volume slider is appearing on screen, it means that your game is not running in a true full screen exclusive mode. After we apply this optimization, we can run the same test. If the volume slider no longer shows up, that means we are running in true full screen exclusive. Before we do anything, we're quickly going to make a backup of this to ensure that if we make any changes with inside of it and we can't remember how to change them back or if you just want the backup there just to have peace of mind you can utilize it at any time see yourself to the top left hand side to file select export navigate down to the bottom where it says export range and select this to all this makes a complete backup of all of the windows registry it takes a few more seconds but we can be really thorough with this to ensure that no changes are made that you don't want or can't revert back and we can just call this anything i'm going to be calling it reg backup then select save and to utilize the registry backup at any time this can literally be weeks from now if you want 
to. What you need to do is double click the file, select yes, yes, and that's it, restored. Inside the Windows Registry Editor, go to the top left hand side, navigate down to H key current user, navigate down to system, then go to game config store. Navigate down to this folder underneath it and double click. Once you're on this folder, what we're then going to do is press Ctrl and F on the keyboard to bring up the find function. We're then going to search for Apex. Select find next. That's immediately brought me to the Apex Legends registry. Go to the file path for this so you can see the extended path. Unfortunately, this is selecting the DirectX 12.exe. This application fix will not work for DX12. We need to apply this to the DirectX 11 version. Press Control F once again, hit find next. Hover over, and here we have the R5 Apex.exe, the DirectX 11 version. Go up to the registry at the top titled Flags. Double click on this. As you can see, it's currently set to hexadecimal value 11. That's the default value. If at any point in the future, if you want to change this back to the default setting for any reason, all you need to do is come back to this exact location in the registry, go to the flags file and change the value back to 11 hexadecimal. But what we're going to do is we're going to change this from 11 to 211 hexadecimal. Okay. All we then need to do is exit out of the registry, boot back inside of the game on that exact same test with the volume slider. If it doesn't come up this time, fantastic. We're now utilizing full screen exclusive mode with lower latency and better performance. Before we continue on with the optimizations, it's now time to cover and potentially fix one of the biggest bugs inside of Apex Legends, which still annoys me to this day, really frustrating, and it's incredible once it's fixed if you are affected by it. If you are utilizing the DirectX 11 version of the game and you're playing the game in full screen mode and have multiple monitors at different refresh rates, let's say you have a main monitor of 144 hertz or even 240 hertz or above, and you have a second or third display connected to your PC that's say 60 hertz, it's an older display, that's completely fine. It's going to run the game at the refresh rate of the lowest monitor connected to your system. So for me on my 240 hertz display, when I boot into the game, my game will be running itself in 60 hertz mode, even though I'm not utilizing that monitor, it's just connected to my PC as a secondary display. You may not even realize that your game is affected by this, but you can test it out really quickly and easily. Boot into the game as you usually would, load into something like the firing ring, wiggle your mouse around and just get a general idea of how fast motion is on your display. At that point, what I want you to do is navigate inside of the game settings, set the game to window mode temporarily. Press escape, go back inside of the game and wiggle your mouse around again really quickly. Even though we're running in windowed mode, if it looks incredibly fast, smooth and silky compared to how it was in full screen, it means that you have this bug. Now there are a few options available to us to get around this. Number one is going to be playing the game in borderless windowed mode. It isn't the best option, you're going to get lower FPS and increased input latency. Number two is to potentially disable those extra monitors when you're booting into Apex Legends and playing Apex Legends only. Next option, if your secondary monitors have higher refresh rates available, make Make sure that your refresh rates are at least matching, if not even higher. And option number three, which is going to be the option I'm going to recommend to basically everyone that is affected by this, is to utilize the DX12 version of the game rather than DX11 or the default mode. To enable DirectX 12, it's super quick, simple, and easy to apply. All you need to do is simply add this launch option at the front of your launch options, and the game will simply boot into DirectX 12 mode. And because DirectX 12 mode games don't run in true full screen exclusive mode, but we do get lower latency compared to DX11 games running in windowed mode, it will leave you with a better overall experience. Next up, is GPU optimizations. I won't be going into a massive GPU optimization deep dive in this video. Instead, I'm going to be providing you with the topics you need to look into. There's also videos on the channel which you can follow along with to lead you down the right path of optimizing your GPU correctly for games like Apex Legends. Number one is to look into utilizing DDU or Display Driver Uninstaller to remove all of the excess and old GPU drivers from your system. Just utilizing DDU to do a clean driver install can fix many people's FPS stutter, game crashes, and low performance. On top of that, for the more advanced users out there watching this video, I would highly recommend looking to debloat your GPU drivers before you install them. You can do this on both AMD and Nvidia cards and you can find the videos linked in the description down below. It doesn't take particularly long but you can jump into the driver files, remove all of the excess features and stuff you don't need and just install a core driver which has all of the features you want and remove all of the rubbish you don't. This process alone can raise 0.1 and 1% low FPS astronomically across the board for practically all games but especially DirectX 12. Looking for the best control panel settings, for those of you utilizing Radeon GPUs, right click on your desktop, open up the AMD software, navigate over to the gaming tab, navigate down to the installed section and select Apex Legend. But first of all, start off with trying out AMD Anti-Lag. If you do run into consistent stuttering, I would recommend turning this off, but it's had a lot of updates since this feature was first introduced, and I would recommend giving it a go, as it works wonders when GPU bound. Next up is Radeon Image Sharpening. This is a fantastic option built into the driver, which can help sharpen your game. I personally like about 20 to 30%. You may not like this, so adjust it. It's complete personal preference. If you're not planning on utilizing FreeSync with inside of the game, ensure that Enhanced Sync has been turned off. Wait for vertical refresh it should be set to always off. AMD FreeSync should be turned to on or off depending on your personal preference. And if you want to boost the saturation of the colors with inside of the
of the game to make the game more vibrant and pop more, enable the custom color section, never get down to saturation, and I personally like to use about 125%, but that is quite aggressive. Once that's completed, we can then go ahead and exit out. For the best NVIDIA control panel settings, go to your desktop, right click, go down to show more options, then select the NVIDIA control panel. Navigate to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview, ensure the middle option has been selected, then go to the bottom right, select apply. Top left hand side once again to manage 3D settings, then go to the program settings option because we don't want to change the system wide settings, we only want to adjust the settings for Apex Legends individually. If you're planning on utilizing the DirectX 12 version, select the DirectX 12 version. If you're not, go with the normal. First of all, image sharpening. This is a fantastic option which is available if you want to sharpen the game, make the visuals even clearer. This is personal preference. I like to have this both turned on and set to the default settings of 50 and 17. With that selected, scroll down once again to power management mode, change this to prefer maximum performance. The reason we're going to be setting this to prefer maximum performance, even though that normal is now recommended, is that we're only going to be setting this on the per game basis. So we'll still be utilizing the normal power plan for the GPU when the system isn't running Apex Legends, but the moment you boot the game, it's going to maximize the performance of the GPU, which is fantastic. Preferred refresh rate should be set to highest available. And if you want a minor FPS increase, comes with a spike visual loss, change the texture filtering from quality to high performance. Go to the bottom right, select apply and OK. For those of you looking to get the absolute best performance possible and you want to dive deeper into more advanced optimizations, which are still quick, easy and basic to apply, I would highly recommend checking out the video on screen now, which is my advanced FPS companion video. This video will dive deeper into the more in-depth settings which are available to you on practically all systems, show you how to set them, optimize them and get the absolute best performance possible. It covers BIOS settings you should look into, it covers things like resizable bar, how to set custom fan curves on your PC to ensure that your PC stays as cool as possible for as long as possible, performance, and basically ticks all of the boxes this video doesn't. By all means, you do not have to follow along with that video. You'll still get phenomenal results just following along with the basic optimizations included in this video alongside the best settings you should be utilizing. But if you are serious about getting the best performance out of your system, you have a bit of extra time, I would highly recommend checking out that video using the card on the top right hand side of the screen or find it linked down in the description down below. Next up we have in-game settings and what you should be utilizing, whether you're looking for a great looking game but with a competitive advantage, whilst maintaining great visuals, or if you're looking for the absolute best FPS possible with the biggest competitive advantage, we're going to jump into the in-game settings now. Highly recommend that you boot into the firing range just so you can see the settings being changed live and make any minor adjustments to the recommended settings to suit your personal preference. Go ahead and press escape, head to the settings menu. For basic in-game settings that you should be making use of, I'd highly recommend changing your crosshair damage feedback to just the X with shield icon. Damage numbers I would set to stacking. Ping opacity I'd like to have faded. Next up is navigating down to taking damage, closes death box or crafting menu. This will stop those horrible situations when you're inside someone's loot box trying to get an armor swap, you get shot and it instantly closes the box for you. Make sure that you turn this off. Navigating down to usage sharing, I would disable this in nearly all cases. I would also enable the performance display. Most of the other settings are pretty much personal preference, so adjust those how you wish to. Next up and most importantly for this video is the video settings. Start with the display mode. This should be set to full screen in nearly all cases, unless you are running into the refresh rate bug. Resolution, if you want to go with native, by all means go with native, it's going to give you the best looking game. Unless you are planning on utilizing technologies such as AMD RSR, Nvidia NIS, or integer scaling. I'm on a 4K monitor, but I'm going to be using an integer scaled resolution so I can actually play at 1080p, but have it look fantastic. Brightness is personal preference. Field of view is personal preference, but I prefer 110. FOV ability scaling, I'd recommend actually disabling as this will provide you with a more consistent experience with inside of the game. Sprint view shake, I would have set to minimal. V-Sync should be set to disable. And video reflex should be set to enable plus boost if it is available to you on your GPU. Adaptive resolution target, we're going to go all the way down to zero with that. We're also going to be disabling adaptive super sampling. Simply pause the video and take one of the presets which is on screen, copy the settings which are shown for that preset, apply them to your game. If you don't quite like how the game performs or how the game looks, potentially look to try a different preset until you find one that works best for you. Once all of the in-game settings have been dialed in for your system, we now need to see if DirectX 11 or DirectX 12 is going to work best. This could change drastically depending on how high-end or low end your system is, if you're GPU bound, CPU bound, if you're on Intel, AMD or Nvidia, it's really a per system setting. In DirectX 12 mode in nearly all systems you'll see a massive increase to the 0.1 and 1% low FPS, but you may see slightly lower high FPS. DX12 does seem to fix many of the bugs including the refresh rate bug, so I would definitely recommend giving this a go. All you need to do is navigate inside of the description down below, just below the launch options you copied earlier. You'll also see dash EAC launcher settings settings DX12. Go all the way from the right hand side to the left, right click, select copy. Go over to AP Legends, go to Properties. Go right to the start of the launch options, paste. Press the space bar to ensure that there is a space between this launch option and the next one that starts. Once that's done, exit out, go to the bottom, select play. The first time you boot the DirectX 12 version of this game, you'll more than likely find that these shaders are being compiled. This can take a few moments to double check that the DX12 version of the game is actually running. On the bottom right hand side, you'll see that it says DirectX 12 beta. Jump into a casual mode or any 
modes that you typically play, go into the firing range, get a general gist of what the performance is like, play it for at least a game or two to ensure that we aren't running into any shader compilation issues, and see what the overall performance is like. If it's smooth, silky, responsive, and you like the way it feels, keep the DirectX 12 version on unless you run into any issues in the future. DirectX 12 for me has been phenomenal, especially on my AMD systems, and I would definitely recommend giving this a go as it can solve so many performance issues with the game. If you no longer wish to utilize the DirectX 12 version of the game, find the DX12 launch option, highlight and copy the entire launch option, press the backspace bar to remove it, exit out, next time you boot the game, will then be booted into the default or DirectX 11 version of the title. Once your game and all settings are completely set up, one last thing I would highly recommend that you at least look into or potentially implement to your game is either FreeSync or G-Sync depending on what GPU you are running. A properly set up implementation of G-Sync or FreeSync is absolutely phenomenal, especially in games like Apex Legends where the engine itself has an inbuilt FPS limit, so the maximum FPS you can get is going to be capped anyway. This is great because Apex Legends FPS can still fluctuate quite a bit due to the way the game works. You could jump into a fight with 20 other people in a really hot spot of the map, your FPS is going to dip in those scenarios, and FreeSync and G-Sync can just help alleviate that slightly. I have recently released a video to the channel going over a quick and easy setup guide for G-Sync or FreeSync, going over all of the best settings you need to be setting up quickly and easily. And it's something I would highly recommend you take the time to check out. You can find that linked in the description down below. If you don't wish to utilize FreeSync or G-Sync, I would still highly recommend capping your in-game FPS to match your monitor's refresh rate, just so we can remove that excess strain, keeping our performance more consistent, especially because Apex Legends has an FPS cap of 300 on the engine anyway. For NVIDIA users to cap your in-game FPS, the easiest way to do this is to utilize the NVIDIA control panel. Head over to manage 3D settings in the top left hand side, go to program settings, select the version of the game you're going to be capping, then navigate down to maximum frame rate, turn this to the on position, set this to your monitor's refresh rate, so for me that's 240, select OK, go to apply, and you're then good to go. And there you guys have it. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any other tips, tricks, or insightful settings, let me know of them in that comment section down below, alongside what your results were from watching this video. If you have enjoyed this sort of content and would like to dive deeper into optimizing your PC, consider checking out one of the two videos on screen now, and I'll see you guys over there.